So we've got a week of college football in the books, and I hope everyone uh, had a great Labor Day weekend. Uh, if you did not catch us live, uh, go back and watch on uh, my partner Mike Martinez's page, Big Regan on Sports. Uh, we did a we did almost two hours, uh, and also joined by our friend Willie from the Shakeback Media Group on on Friday night about uh, we covered. A, we did a preview of the Ohio State Notre Dame game. We talked about the Donovan Mitchell trade from the Utah Jazz to the Cavaliers, and also uh, the expansion of the college football playoff starting in in 2026. Although uh, some are actually pushing for 2024 when the conferences expand, and that's probably going to get blocked by uh, several. Um, several key components. I don't think the SEC wants in on that. Uh, but we actually learned quite a bit that Ohio State's defense is much improved, still needs a little bit of work. Uh, Notre Dame is going to be just fine. Uh, Michigan picking up exactly where they left off. Alabama still scheduling absolute nobodies uh, before SEC play begins. But then again, the majority of the SEC are essentially nobodies to Alabama over the last 10 to 15 years. Oregon apparently forgot to change the difficulty off of All-American before pressing the start button against Georgia. Um, Florida has shown that they uh, could actually be, um, they're not on Alabama's level, but they're going to give them a game this year. Let's uh, let's see what exactly uh, happens where Utah goes from here. After that uh, heartbreaking defeat near the end, we know that Clemson uh, probably should have won uh, won that game against Georgia Tech last night by uh, by a little bit more. And teams this week we've got the we've got Alabama and Texas on Saturday, but really outside of that, you got Florida and Kentucky. Uh, you've got Arkansas, South Carolina, Miami gets uh, USM, Ohio State plays Arkansas State. So there's not a whole lot out there um, for for week two. Uh, honestly, nowhere near as competitive as what week one is. As a matter of fact, the only top 25 matchup we have is number 10 Baylor is going to be in Provo uh, to face number 25 Utah. Saturday night at 10:15 Eastern, uh, and but everybody else, this is a uh, this is essentially tune-up games for them. Uh, a couple of teams have a, a few conference games out there. US, USC gets to uh, gets to play Stanford um, again, as we talked about. The Florida and Kentucky, um, Missouri plays Kansas State, um, South Carolina, Arkansas. So the the first couple of weeks is still the feeling out period, just like any heavyweight title fight. Um, but one of the other stories that came out of the weekend was what occurred down in Virginia. We're not talking about the Cavaliers. Virginia Tech, for the second time in four years, traveled to Old Dominion and for the second time in four years, was beaten by Old Dominion. Now let's also remember here, Old Dominion, in a lot of people's minds, the only way that they know Old Dominion is one of two reasons. Uh, one of three reasons, I should say. It's number one, it's the nickname of the state of Virginia. Number two, it's a CMA and I want to say Grammy-winning country music act. Uh, and then also it was the alma mater of Boston Celtics great Robert the Chief Parrish. Um, but for Vatek to go down there and lose twice in four years against, against the Monarchs, um, a team that they are actually going to see every year between now and 2031, Virginia Tech committed five turnovers on the day. Four of those were from uh, were from trans or Marshall transfer sophomore quarterback Grant Wells. Wells was only 21 of 36 for 193 yards, uh, but yet the Hokies dominated time of possession by uh, by a margin of, of 
just a shade of under 36 minutes to a, a shade over 24. It was 35.55 to 24.05. The Monarchs had only 245 yards of combined offense and 13 first downs, but yet Vatek committed 14 penalties for 100 yards. I don't care who you are. You could be Alabama. You commit 14 penalties for 100 yards, there's no way you're getting out of that game unscathed. This was certainly not the way that Brent Pry wanted to open his tenure as Vatek head coach as he was the interim coach after Justin Fuente was fired in Blacksburg with two games remaining last year. The Hokies were 5-5 five and five at the time. Uh, Pry got them a 1-1 one and one record got them bowl eligible and then they proceeded to go out there and get absolutely stopped by Maryland 54 to 10 in the pinstripe bowl. Uh, yes, it was a bowl game, but yet it's how how can you actually consider your season a success when uh, number one you fire your coach, number two you're barely bowl eligible, number three you go out and you get crushed in that bowl game. And number four, you eventually end up finishing the season with a below 500 record. And you can almost make the argument now, could Vatek, even though they're in a Power 5 conference, could they not even be the second best Division One team in the state? We all know Virginia is going to be number one, but... You've also got Liberty, even though Liberty is is replacing a star quarterback this year. Old Dominion uh, what, um, was a bowl team last year. Um, and yet Old Dominion's only been at the Division One level. They only restarted their football program within about the last 10 or so years. Uh, it was 2009. They were uh, Old Dominion had a football team from 1930 until 1940 and then with more than $10,000 in debt, a rule uh, that prohibited uh, freshmen from playing and accreditation violation uh, accreditation issues. I don't want to say violations, but accreditation issues with not only the football team but also with the university. The the school essentially canceled the football program and did not restart it until nearly 60 years later. Um, actually, almost 70 years. It doesn't actually help matters that back in 1940, also the Monarchs lost all at every single game on their schedule. Um, they were also one of a handful of schools that canceled their entire 2020 season with the outset of the COVID pandemic. Um, West Virginia actually, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Vatek actually held the lead in this game 10-7 at halftime and they had to delay the start of the second half by a good uh, like a good bit of time because some of the assistant coaches after they were leaving the locker room to go back up to the booth um to to call the game from the sky boxes got stuck in the elevator of all things um at at the stadium there on uh on the campus of of Old Dominion the Coaches were eventually able to kind of get out, um, and, and the name of the stadium is S.B. Ballard Stadium, which holds just about 22,000, 23,000, and there were about 21 and change in attendance. Um, it was a majority of Old Dominion fans. However, Va Tech, it's it was not the longest drive, and Virginia Tech always travels very well. Um, I don't want to say it was 50-50, 60-40, 70-30, but it certainly won uh it certainly wasn't going to be any kind of 90-10 uh facil uh you know uh ratio there. With the with the delay, you would figure that it would kind of delay any momentum, but the problem is is Vatek didn't really have any momentum to build off of and kind of use that got going a little bit. The delay actually ended up ho uh, hurting ODU instead of Vatek because Vatek ended up outscoring the Monarchs 10 nothing in that third quarter yet got shut out in the fourth quarter and a Blake Watson Monarchs touchdown with 33 seconds left basically sealed the deal 
to make matters even worse, reports came out on Sunday that certain items were stolen out of the lockers from, uh, of Virginia Tech players in the visiting locker room while they were on the field. Uh, more details are still going to be coming out about that in the coming days. There's an ongoing investigation with the university, security, and local police. Um, and it doesn't also help the fact that Vatek not only has to uh, return home for Boston College this weekend in an ACC conference battle, but they also now, of those games every year against ODU until 2031, they have to go to Norfolk five times, and that's 2024, 27, 29, and 31. Uh, Liberty and Virginia are also in-state non-conference opponents for Old Dominion in the coming years, who are now uh, who made 2022 their first year in the Sun Belt Conference after coming over from uh, the uh, after coming over from Conference USA. The other ironic part is one of the other members of the Sun Belt Conference are Appalachian State, who we all remember are the are the king of the giant killers for smaller schools taking down uh, a power five conference now we actually see horrific programs such as uh, massachusetts and connecticut routinely get beat by at least one fbs school per year and are always in the bottom 25 on cbs and espn and every other you know uh, every other publication trying to be funny uh, but there's nothing funny about losing to a school who actually has about half the scholarships and a third of the budget that you do. Um, but this is uh, their Old Dominion is not going to be the next Boise State. Uh, they're not going to be the giant killers who burst onto the steam, uh, burst onto the scene, took everybody by surprise to where they're starting to get courted by you know other schools. They're not going to be essentially college football's version of of Gonzaga um, but this is something where Vatek kind of has to question the decision I understand that other programs do this Oklahoma schedules Tulsa every year and that's usually a wash Ohio State schedules Youngstown State Kent or Akron on their schedule every single year and when was the last time they lost to any one of those? It's a it's a great payday for the smaller schools, which is what Vatek was hoping this would have been. You know, let's go uh, let's go down in Norfolk. Let's you know let's beat even if it's close. Let's uh, let's beat up on uh, let's physically beat up on Old Dominion. Uh, there's no way they would have expected to lose this game and have a repeat of, of four years ago. Um, Old Dominion gets a good payday out of it, uh, you know, bolsters them to where they can actually keep coming back and getting lamb to the slaughter here with this. And then Old Dominion comes out and, and essentially kind of punches Vatek in the mouth um, and, and, and pulls the upset. So what was your favorite part of the opening weekend of college football? Let me know what you guys think down in the comment box below. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at JCBlueNote24. Um, if you have not seen his latest episode, or, uh, I want to say it was yesterday, uh, go check out Mike's post-game review of the Ohio State-Notre Dame game. Uh, go back and watch our... Uh, our show uh, on his channel from Saturday, and I think might have uh, Mike might have also dropped some knowledge, and it's news to me uh, that there's a possibility that the wise guys could be coming at you this week. And keep in mind, ladies and gents, we are just over a month away from the one-year anniversary bash of the Wise Guys Sports Show. Uh, you're going to see uh, a little bit more production value. You're going to do a lot more hijinks. We've got our logo. Um, we're exploring some uh, some some streaming options. Uh, we've actually now simulcasted to Twitch. Uh, we could actually be simulcasting on both of our channels going forward. That's something that uh, that's in the works. Um, but we've got a lot on our plates here uh, in terms of bringing you guys content that we that we hope that you enjoy. 
and uh, and I will be back with you guys hopefully a little later on this week. I there's even a possibility you could see me do a um, a live simulcast between Twitch and YouTube this Thursday night for the it, at at the very least uh, for the first half of the uh, the Buffalo Bills and and Los Angeles Rams as my two favorite teams in the NFL right now um, with the uh, uh, with the NFL regular season officially kicking off on Thursday night uh, out at SoFi Stadium in LA. So we will see you guys very, very soon. Everybody take care out there. And if you're on the East Coast like I am, uh, try to stay dry because it's raining here in Cleveland. I know New York got hammered over the weekend. Um, I understand it's fall is very, very close, but I should not be have to be wearing long sleeve shirts uh, the day after Labor Day. So everybody take care out there. We'll see you guys very soon.